Hello, everyone. I'm Nikki Novick, and welcome to Praxis Magazine. Members from Duquesne University sorority Delta Zeta held a fundraising event for their philanthropy called Hounds for Hearing. As you will see, they not only raised money for a great cause, they were responsible for creating a whole lot of smiles on AWOC. For many students dealing with the stress of midterm exams, these adorable dogs provided a much needed boost. Just getting to see the dogs, it's so hard being away from home, like not seeing any of our pets, so like, it's just nice. The sorority partnered with the Animal Friends Animal Shelter. Just providing the kids with the comfort that they need from being away from home and their own animals too. Volunteers brought therapy dogs to campus, and as you can see, students loved it. They said it's awesome for the dogs, but we just all miss our dogs from home, so it's awesome for us too. The hugs and cuddles have a deeper purpose. This is our philanthropy event. It's called Hounds for Hearing. We're with Delta Zeta, and all of the funds go to our student philanthropy, which is speech and hearing. So now we have therapy dogs coming in every hour just to pet people. We have baked goods and a little raffle basket. Delta Zeta leaders tell me animal friends are important partners, as members help provide canine support for people in the deaf and hard of hearing community. We've been working with animal friends. They work with like the library a lot for coming in during finals week and midterms week. So we're just familiar with them on campus. Campus. So they suggest animal friends and they're just awesome and we've had them in the past and they're so sweet. Volunteer Amy Piper, a proud Duquesne alum, told me she loves bringing dogs to campus as it puts smiles on students' faces and also helps spread awareness for animal friends. I'm here a lot. Yes, I know. Uh, I'm a graduate of, of Duquesne and so I have, you know, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. So we do the uh, law school. We come to the law school when they need to have... Um, distress days for the kids and then um, I were in fact I was just telling them I'll be over at the nursing school next week and uh, wherever they're needed we come for midterms and finals in the library and uh, really whenever we get a call we try to come for us it's providing a uh, care and comfort to the people that need it most make sure to keep an eye out for Delta Zeta's next event in the spring semester called big man on campus for more information, you can go to Delta Zeta's Instagram at Delta Zeta Duke. From anchoring Praxis Magazine from this very chair to the forefront of breaking news, an accomplished graduate has emerged as a leading presence in the field of news reporting. Bailey Martin, delivering the news at WTRF TV in Wheeling, West Virginia. The Duquesne University alum expressed gratitude for the experience she gained working as a student journalist on the bluff, preparing her for her career in television news. I never could have imagined that I would have gained all of the experience and had all of those opportunities that I was afforded. So looking back, I say nothing but good things about Duquesne. I wish I could go back every single day and um, I, I'm just, it, it's my favorite place. Bailey told me she honed her skills shooting and editing video, as well as producing, reporting, and anchoring the news for Praxis Magazine. Hello everyone, I'm Bailey Martin, and welcome to Praxis Magazine. Learning to use her creativity to craft compelling stories, and now offering current students advice. I would just say to seize every opportunity that is presented to you. I am so thankful that at Duquesne, I was provided the opportunity to work in the Center for Emerging and Innovative Media. I'm so thankful that I was able to work underneath of Mike Clark and Don Ma and all of those other professors who are big names in the business. And my only regret is that I didn't start sooner. I'm so thankful that I was able to take the ideas that were in my brain and have the people around me to fully execute them She's now turning those ideas in her brain into television stories for WTRF TV, explaining how she followed her dreams to become a TV journalist. I always thought that that was the coolest job in the world, but I just thought it was unattainable. And the next day, I was at a Duquesne student television meeting, and the rest is really, really history. Bailey's day-to-day -day work schedule now consists of much more than just anchoring. As a multimedia journalist, she is also her own videographer, writer, and editor for all of her stories. So when I get it at 3, I'm writing a story before 5. Then after 5 p.m., I'm packing up gear and heading out in the field. And then I'm coming back, writing, editing, and then coming back and anchoring once again at the end of the night. So it's, it's a packed day, but uh, 
you know, I thrive in that kind of high pressure environment. She has already made an impact with her viewers and her peers in the industry. Bailey was honored as West Virginia's Emerging Television Journalist of the Year at the 2023 West Virginia Broadcast Association Awards in May. And when they announced my name, that's when I knew, like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. That feeling of the work that I've put in, the time in school that I've put in, all of the fun times, all of the hard times, made that moment really a pinnacle that has stood out to me. The newsroom isn't the only place where Bailey has gained prominence. With more than 330,000 followers and nearly 3 million likes on TikTok, Bailey has found a new way to build a community of viewers. I think that really honestly makes people feel more connected to you. And I feel connected to people in the community who have come up to me and said, I watch your TikToks all the time. I watch you on TikTok. And it's funny to think about, but really, you know, the reason they're able to come up to me and say that is because they feel that connection. So that's really been so special to me. And my favorite part of my job is getting to talk to so many different people and hear so many people's stories. And, you know, you realize everyone's life is on a different path but we're all here in this small tight-knit community and you see the same people over again. I've made a lot of friendships, a lot of connections, and I love getting to talk to people out in the community. That's As she continues talking to people in the tri-state area, telling their stories, remembering the encouragement and wisdom she learned from her parents and her professors here at Duquesne University. They have always taught me to stay true to myself while also being considerate, being compassionate, thinking about not only, you know, the viewers at home, but the people around you, my coworkers, m the people that I interview in the community, forming those relationships. I think that it, it takes a person with, you know, a good heart and a lot of personality to truly make it. And those are the people who, you know, I've seen at home watching on TV that I hope and aspire to be one day. Bailey told me she hopes students on campus can use her story to push themselves to achieve whatever career goals they envision for themselves. Yeah, I mean, I really just think that anything is, is possible. And I know that sounds cheesy saying that, but really, I had a dream in my brain three years ago, four years ago, that I never thought could come true. And every single day I have to pinch myself and say, you are living what you dreamed of when you were 18, 19 years old. And I'm so thankful that I can say that. Duquesne really brought me those opportunities. Any example of the remarkable talent and commitment nurtured within our university and from the heart of the studio? Each year on September 11th, memorials take place nationwide and right here at Duquesne. This Praxis Magazine report explores the importance of having the memorial on our campus each year. This past September 11th marked the 22nd anniversary of the terrorist attacks on America that killed thousands of innocent people and devastated countless numbers of families. Memorials were held across the country and right here on Duquesne's campus. Students gathered outside of College Hall to help create a memorial in remembrance of the lives lost, while also paying tribute to the heroes that responded with bravery. The display resonated in a very personal way for one Duquesne student who shared his story with me. Among the hundreds of students who passed by this red, white, and blue memorial along AWOC was McAnulty College of Liberal Arts senior Russell Macias. I think it's important that they know it's still an event that affects people today. Russell, a sports info and media major, tells me displays like this one marking the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks is a lesson for students outside of the classroom. It happened 22 years ago, so I'm not going to be naive and say that people my age that are from, uh, let's say, Buffalo are directly affected. Some of them are, sure, but for a lot of people who weren't directly affected, it's not a memory they have because they weren't alive. They don't have the memories of being in class or going about their day and just having it completely altered early. So I, I just hope it, it grounds them, you know, I think, make them realize the significance of it. Because, yes, 3,000 people died that day, but 3,000 more have died since then. So many first responders and other people have gotten sick and are suffering.
Russ and his family know about that kind of suffering firsthand. A Long Island native, Russell's father, Keith Macias, was an NYPD officer on duty on September 11th, 2001. When he went to work Monday, September 10th at 6 p.m. He didn't get home till Wednesday, September 12th at 9 a.m. He was only home for a few hours before he was back to work. N nobody, I can't stress enough, nobody thought those buildings were going down even when they were on fire. He wanted to go down there because he was just thinking, I could get some more overtime, not thinking 3,000 people are going to die in lower Manhattan today. Um, you know, he was just, uh, it's crazy to me to think that he was doing that and he didn't think it was his duty. He always he always points to other people, particularly his, his sergeant in the Marine Corps who passed away on 9-11, Michael Curtin, sergeant. Keith Macias joined his fellow officers in the rescue and recovery efforts every day after the Twin Towers collapsed. Like so many other heroes in blue, the first day Keith took a day off from the painstaking work was the day Russ was born. On September 24th, 2001, just 13 days after 9-11. So he went, he got to see me, and then he went back to work, back to the recovery. He reported to Lower Manhattan five or six times just working on the bucket brigade and looking, and he said he was down at Staten Island a lot, and he said that was, that was the worst job he had to do. For him, it's about the people who lost their lives and stuff like that. For him going down there, being on the Bucket Brigade and going to Staten Island, the, 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 the recovery that he was doing, it was not, that was his duty. You know, that wasn't what he wanted. He didn't give anything. I would just say, um, you know, my dad's not one for wanting to be honored. He doesn't consider himself a hero. He was in the Marines, doesn't think he's a veteran because he didn't, he didn't go to a war. Uh, but he, he did a lot. He was a sergeant. And then he was in Brooklyn South auto larceny at the end of his career with the NYPD. Before he retired, he was a sergeant. He was proud of that. And uh, I just, you know, everyone should be proud of him, even if he doesn't want that type of recognition. As we get farther away from September 11th of 2001, Russ and so many others wonder about how the heroes of 9-11 will be remembered. He says it's gratifying to While know that students of Duquesne University are making the commitment of honoring their lives so that future generations will never forget. To the ice ranks of the NHL, one of the distinguished alumni has carved an inspiring path in the world of professional sports. While many graduates of the McAnally College of Liberal Arts move across the country and as far away as around the world for their careers, alum Sydney Bauer has a much shorter commute to her office. Did you ever think your office would be one block away from where you went to college? And how does that make you feel? <laughs> no, <laughs> I did not, but it's, uh, it's definitely nice. I will say that it's funny because um, after I uh, graduated from Duquesne University, I worked in Duquesne's athletic department as the assistant director of creative, creative media and production for close to three years. And so it's funny because I, I went to school here. I worked in their athletic department. I was here. My internship was right across the street. And I think that helped as well. Sydney's path to PPG Paints Arena started on the block. She learned a variety of skills in creating digital content while at Duquesne University. When speaking with Sydney Bauer, she described to me how arriving on campus, she had no prior experience to video production. I had so many great mentors, um, whether it's people here at Duquesne University, whether it was people that I um, worked alongside in my internships. Um, for example, Mike Clark being one of those uh, professors that I had during my freshman year, you know, I just was very interested and he does, you know, newscasting, but I was more interested in behind the scenes and not necessarily being in front of the camera, but operating behind the scenes. She helped promote the Duquesne Dukes and she is currently using those skills to provide video support for the National Hockey League team, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Since Sydney grew up sharing her love for the sport with her family, she didn't have to look far to find opportunities in her hometown. Um, I was passionate about sports from a young age, and growing up in Pittsburgh, sports is such a huge 
huge hobby around here. And um, so my family has always been into sports. I played softball and basketball in high school and then college I did volleyball in a mural. So just always staying active and I always had a passion for it, whether I was watching it or playing it. Most Duquesne graduates are willing to travel to extreme lengths for their careers. Some graduates go across the country or as far as going overseas. But Sydney Bauer has shown that she is one of the lucky few that has found success about a block away from the McAnulty School of Liberal Arts here at Duquesne University. For aspiring sports journalists like myself, Sydney Bauer is a great mentor and only a block away. For Praxis Magazine, I'm Tanner Ma. No matter what careers students are preparing for at Duquesne University, administrators in the McAnulty College of Liberal Arts encourage all students to meet with the professionals in their field of interest. Praxis Magazine reporter Charlie Wells explains how students interested in film and television learned from young professionals as the university celebrated the life of August Wilson. August Wilson is a household name in Pittsburgh. His plays and stories flow throughout the hearts, culture, and lives of the residents therein. Duquesne University has had the privilege of working with his friends and family since 2011 to help minority students grow to their full potential. They helped raise money to rebuild Wilson's childhood home in the Hill District, which was revealed in 2022. In 2016, students began a tradition of celebrating his birthday with a large block party, and in 2018, the August Wilson House Fellowship was established. This program picks deserving artists of color and gives them the chance to hone in their skills. This year, we celebrate Cotter and Maurice Redwood, two Pittsburgh natives that encase August Wilson's love and message in everything they do. On October 4th, Duquesne gifted them their award, and they told us about how they feel about their work, the community, and their lives. The honor that comes with telling stories is enough for me to to, to want to do it and want to keep doing it. And then furthermore, it's about how can we inspire the next generation of storytellers, the next generation of artists. I think, especially today, it's kind of just coming full circle now. But, you know, knowing that August Wilson knew my grandfather and mentioned him in one of his plays, and now we're sitting here accepting this award that's named for him and his honor. And, you know, I guess for me, it's like, okay, what kind of legacy are we going to leave now? And hopefully one day people will be talking about us like they talk about August Wilson. May we say congratulations, guys, and best wishes to next year's fellows. Maybe we'll catch you in April at next year's block party. For Praxis Magazine, this is Charlie Wells. Another way the university shows its commitment to honoring the life and legacy of August Wilson is the annual block party organized by the Honors College. Praxis Magazine looks forward to covering the event in the spring. Time now for Pittsburgh Sports. Joining me now is Praxis Sports Director Macias. Russ, you're taking a look back at this semester and taking a peek at what's ahead. That's right, Nikki. And I'm going to be focusing on two words, certainty and uncertainty. Sports teams that are successful love to be certain about their roster. They want to know that not only are they good, they can win in any circumstance. In Pittsburgh, there was only one team that was certainly good. The Duquesne Dukes football team are once again the NEC champions having gone six and one in conference, their most wins in conference in a single season since 2011. They were led by starting quarterback Darius Perantis, who threw for over 2,000 yards and 23 touchdowns. Duquesne also featured three running backs, a three-headed monster of Edward Robinson, Taj Butts, and Jamario Clements, who combined for over 1,600 rushing yards and 13 rushing touchdowns. Leading receiver DJ Powell, hauled in over 700 receiving yards and nine touchdowns, has since declared for the NFL draft. Head coach Jerry Schmidt took home NEC Coach of the Year honors. It was truly a banner year for the Dukes. Outside of them, what has been certain within the city of Pittsburgh? Not the Steelers, currently 7-5, and five, and now down starting quarterback Kenny Pickett for the stretch run. They've been one of the more inconsistent teams in the NFL, some weeks looking like they could beat anyone, before a week like this where they lose to the lowly Arizona Cardinals this past Sunday. They'll look to turn it around as they play host to the New England Patriots this coming Thursday night. The Pittsburgh Penguins are currently 11-10-3, and, 
and they're on the outside looking in of the playoff mark over a quarter of the way into the season. They've struggled mightily with the power play, having scored power play goals in only four of their first 25 games and having the third worst power play percentage in the NHL at just 10.45%. That has been the difference between winning and losing. That showed this weekend when they lost both games to the Philadelphia Flyers and went 0 for 8 on the power play in both of those games combined. Tristan Jari, their goalie, has more goals than the power play does since the week of Thanksgiving. The power play hasn't scored since November 14th. It's not good enough. However, Duquesne's men's basketball, while still a little bit consistent, have been extremely promising to open up the year. Aside from a second-half collapse against the Big Ten's Nebraska and a razor-thin loss to Princeton, the Dukes basketball team is appearing to be as good as advertised. The team, currently 5-2, and two, with leaders Day-Day Grant, Jimmy Clark, and Kareem Rozier having stepped up and leading the team, while Fuseni Drame has been an excellent addition through the transfer portal. The Dukes have been sharp and look forward to the conference play, and they were picked fourth in the preseason A-10 poll. They visit Marshall tonight. The Duquesne women's team has had a more inconsistent start to the year, now 4-3, and three, but have a big win over Pitt in the City game. Since then, they slowed down a bit, having been picked fifth in the preseason A-10 poll, and they're currently led by Megan McConnell, Amaya Hamilton, and Niall Bernard. The team is ready to prove they deserve to be where they are in the preseason poll, and they started off strong last night in the A-10, defeating Fordham 75-73 in overtime at the UPMC Cooper Fieldhouse. They survived a 16-point Rams comeback in the fourth quarter. Resilience for the Dukes was something they needed to see, especially after dropping their two previous matchups. Nevertheless, they are 1-0 in A-10 play, and that brings a wrap on Sports on the Bluff. Thank you, Russ. And that wraps up this edition of Praxis Magazine. I'm Nikki Novick, and thank you for watching.